Before we get into today's show, I have some urgent news to share with you. Premier Insight's financial year ends on June 30th, and we're facing a $52,000 gap in funding that must be closed by that date. The great news is that generous friends of the ministry have offered to match the first $2,000 given to help jumpstart giving towards this goal. So please take a moment today to give your best gift at premierinsight.org forward slash Bible in a year. That's premierinsight.org forward slash Bible in a year. Thank you for understanding how important your gift is today and for giving generously. And now it's time for today's podcast. The Bible in a Year, bringing the Word to life. Father God, as we come to your Word today, may we hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. Amen. Psalm 69, verses 13 to 28. But I pray to you, Lord, in the time of your favour. In your great love, O God, answer me with your sure salvation. Rescue me from the mire. Do not let me sink. Deliver me from those who hate me, from the deep waters. Do not let the flood waters engulf me, or the depths swallow me up, or the pit close its mouth over me. Answer me, Lord, out of the goodness of your love. In your great mercy, turn to me. Do not hide your face from your servant. Answer me quickly, for I am in trouble. Come near and rescue me. Deliver me because of my foes. You know how I am scorned, disgraced and shamed. All my enemies are before you. Scorn has broken my heart and has left me helpless. I looked for sympathy, but there was none. For comforters, but I found none. They put gall in my food and gave me vinegar for my thirst. May the table set before them become a snare. May it become retribution and a trap. May their eyes be darkened so that they cannot see and their backs be bent for ever. Pour out your wrath on them. Let your fierce anger overtake them. May their place be deserted. Let there be no one to dwell in their tents. For they persecute those you wound, and talk about the pain of those you hurt. Charge them with crime upon crime. Do not let them share in your salvation. May they be blotted out of the book of life and not be listed with the righteous. Acts chapter 1, verses 1 to 22. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of forty days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptised with water, but in a few days you will be baptised with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered round him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the dates or times the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. 
Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women, and Mary the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers, a group numbering about a hundred and twenty, and said, Brothers and sisters, the scripture had to be fulfilled, in which the Holy Spirit spoke long ago through David concerning Judas, who served as a guide for those who arrested Jesus. He was one of our number and shared in our ministry. With the payment he received for his wickedness, Judas bought a field. There he fell headlong. His body burst open and all his intestines spilled out. Everyone in Jerusalem heard about this and so they called that field in their language, Akeldama, that is, field of blood. For, said Peter, it is written in the book of Psalms, May his place be deserted, let there be no one to dwell in it, and may another take his place of leadership. Therefore it is necessary to choose one of the men who have been with us the whole time the Lord Jesus was living among us, beginning from John's baptism to the time when Jesus was taken up from us, for one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. 2 Samuel chapter 3 verse 22 to chapter 5 verse 5 Just then David's men and Joab returned from a raid and brought with them a great deal of plunder. But Abner was no longer with David in Hebron, because David had sent him away, and he had gone in peace. When Joab and all the soldiers with him arrived, he was told that Abner, son of Ner, had come to the king, and that the king had sent him away, and that he had gone in peace. So Joab went to the king and said, What have you done? Look, Abner came to you. Why did you let him go? Now he is gone. You know Abner, son of Ner. He came to deceive you and observe your movements and find out everything you are doing. Joab then left David and sent messengers after Abner, and they brought him back from the cistern at Sirah. But David did not know it. Now when Abner returned to Hebron, Joab took him aside into an inner chamber, as if to speak with him privately and there, to avenge the blood of his brother Asahel, Joab stabbed him in the stomach, and he died. Later, when David heard about this, he said, I and my kingdom are forever innocent before the Lord concerning the blood of Abner, son of Ner. May his blood fall on the head of Joab and on his whole family. May Joab's family never be without someone who has a running sore or leprosy, or who leans on a crutch, or who falls by the sword, or who lacks food. Joab and his brother Abishai murdered Abner, because he had killed their brother Asahel in the battle of Gibeon. Then David said to Joab and all the people with him, Tear your clothes and put on sackcloth, and walk in mourning in front of Abner. King David himself walked behind the bier, they buried Abner in Hebron, and the king wept aloud at Abner's tomb. All the people wept also. The king sang this lament for Abner. Should Abner have died as the lawless die? Your hands were not bound, your feet were not fettered. You fell as one falls before the wicked. And all the people wept over him again. 
Then they all came and urged David to eat something while it was still day. But David took an oath, saying, May God deal with me, be it ever so severely, if I taste bread or anything else before the sun sets. All the people took note and were pleased. Indeed, everything the king did pleased them. So on that day all the people there and all Israel knew that the king had no part in the murder of Abner, son of Ner. Then the king said to his men, Do you not realise that a commander and a great man has fallen in Israel this day? And today, though I am the anointed king, I am weak, and these sons of Zeruiah are too strong for me. May the Lord repay the evildoer according to his evil deeds. 2 Samuel chapter 4 When Ishbosheth, son of Saul, heard that Abner had died in Hebron, he lost courage, and all Israel became alarmed. Now Saul's son had two men who were leaders of raiding bands. One was named Barna, and the other Rechab. They were sons of Rimon the Berothite from the tribe of Benjamin. Beeroth is considered part of Benjamin, because the people of Beeroth fled to Gitaim and have resided there as foreigners to this day. Jonathan, son of Saul, had a son who was lame in both feet. He was five years old when the news about Saul and Jonathan came from Jezreel. His nurse picked him up and fled, but as she hurried to leave, he fell and became disabled. His name was Mephibosheth. Now Rechab and Bana, the sons of Rimon the Berothite, set out for the house of Ishbosheth, and they arrived there in the heat of the day while he was taking his noonday rest. They went into the inner part of the house as if to get some wheat, and they stabbed him in the stomach. Then Rechab and his brother, Bana, slipped away. They had gone into the house while he was lying on the bed in his bedroom. After they stabbed and killed him, they cut off his head. Taking it with them, they travelled all night by way of the Arabah. They brought the head of Ishbosheth to David at Hebron, and said to the king, Here is the head of Ishbosheth, son of Saul, your enemy, who tried to kill you. This day the Lord has avenged my lord, the king against Saul and his offspring. David answered Rechab and his brother Bana, the sons of Rimon, the Berothite. As surely as the Lord lives, who has delivered me out of every trouble, when someone told me Saul is dead, and thought he was bringing good news, I seized him and put him to death in Ziklag. That was the reward I gave him for his news. How much more, when wicked men have killed an innocent man in his own house and on his own bed, shall I not now demand his blood from your hand and rid the earth of you? So David gave an order to his men, and they killed them. They cut off their hands and feet and hung the bodies by the pool in Hebron. But they took the head of Ishbosheth and buried it in Abner's tomb at Hebron. 2 Samuel chapter 5 All the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and said, We are your own flesh and blood. In the past, while Saul was king over us, You were the one who led Israel on their military campaigns. And the Lord said to you, You shall shepherd my people Israel, and you shall become their ruler. When all the elders of Israel had come to King David at Hebron, the king made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel. David was thirty years old when he became king and he reigned for forty years. In Hebron he reigned over Judah for seven years and six months, and in Jerusalem he reigned over all Israel and Judah for thirty-three years. Father God, 
Thank you that in your great mercy you have given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Amen. For more resources to help you bring the word to life, go to premier.org.uk forward slash Bible. This reading has been taken from the NIV Bible Biblica and is published by Hodder and Stoughton.